Well, hello, everyone. I have a, a special guest today. Uh, this is an amazing success story. Uh, it's Gaida. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? Hello, doctor. I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. Excellent. Thank thanks, you. thanks for being on. Um, you have a very rem remarkable story. Um, I want to know a little bit about um, growing up. You always had a weight problem. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I always had a weight problem. I was never, I was never in a proper weight. Even when I was a toddler, I was overweight. Even, even, so, even like when you were um, born. I don't know about being born. Actually, I, I cannot tell about that. Did My you, mother that is good. Did your mother ever say like you started gaining weight like at age two or three? Was there a certain year that you started gaining weight? Well, she, she cannot remember. My, my mother is an old woman. She can't remember all, the, all of this. But I, when I see my photos when I was a kid, maybe when I was by two years old, I was fine. I looked fine. But after that, I was not. Even in kindergarten, I was better than anyone else in my class. Wow. What, did you have any steroids that you know of? Did your parents ever give you steroids or antibiotics or ear infections? Or did you have asthma? Anything like that? Not steroids, but I remember I was always, always having flu and fevers. Uh, it's, it's a part of my childhood to have a fever and flu. Okay. And that's what I was suffering from since I was a kid. But other than that, no, I had no other problems. Were the symptoms upper respiratory or lung? Where were those, the, the symptoms? Uh, everything from fever, from uh, coughing, from uh, lungs. And you know, uh, when you are a kid, uh, you, you go to the doctor and they would just prescribe you injections and uh, medications. Uh, I cannot remember anything. I don't know anything. My mother is an old woman. She cannot read and write. So whatever the doctor says, it goes. Okay, I got it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I asked that question a little bit later, but uh, go ahead. You were, you were going to say, tell me a little bit about, you went through your whole childhood struggling with weight yes all the time all the time i was fat i was being uh, uh ridiculed i've been called names and all of that and even though that i was eating just the amount of the other kids i was eating just like them i was playing with them but i was like double the size of them no matter what i did i started uh, my first diet when i was nine years old wow um Yes, and it was very strict. It was very hard for me, and I all, I um, I lost maybe fourteen kilograms in a year, mm -hmm. and then I gave up because it was too hard for me as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> then I started um, trying with myself after I became fourteen. Mm -hmm. I started become uh, trying uh, diets by myself, and then I became anorexic. Then I became bulimic and start this cycle. Wow. And I'm still, I'm still suffering from it. You know, you, I, I cannot cure this. I still right. have to fight this. Yeah. But at least now I'm in a safe, safer place with keto. So did you become bulimic when you were like 13 or 14? What, what age? No, I started anorexia. Uh, and then uh, bulimia, I started anorexia at six, 15 six okay. to 16. Okay. And then it was like a, a cycle of anorexia and bulimia and binge eating. Wow. Which doesn't help the metabolism, but so that just kept going. And, and how, how old are you now? Uh, I'm going to be 45 uh, in July. This has been a long time. It's been a very long time. <laughs> a very long time, doctor, yes. Wow. So you, you struggled with the weight. So you're going along, and you had other um, symptoms as well, did you not? Did you have some other body issues? Or I think you had, um, you remember telling me about uh, you had some other issues? Fatigue, uh, um, anxiety. Yeah. Um, it started nothing before sixteen. At sixteen, okay. I started getting depression. Okay. Very depression and fatigued. Yes, and very uh, swing mood. But it was it was called like um, you know teenage years. Yeah. So I was not diagnosed. I was nothing, and um, it was like a cycle in and out of it. But uh, it was a deep. Depression started with me at 16. Other wow. than this, no, I felt nothing. I had ex uh, eczema, yes, I have eczema okay. since I was a kid. Other than that, no. Um, my health uh, became so bad in my 20s. 
That's when in what in what sick. in what way, like the depression or some other problems. The depression became worse, mm -hmm. and then I started to uh, having problems in memories. I had a problem to connect my brain to my uh, hands when I was in the university. I would sit in the class and all of a sudden I cannot understand what's being said to me. Mm. And even if I understand, I want to take a note, my hand cannot write what my brain is telling it. So mm. I struggled with university and I became more depressed and um, uh, I was being fatigued. I was being, um, you know, um, not myself. Mm -hmm. I'm in a class and all of a sudden I feel like I'm in another world, all foggy. I, I'm, I'm not in the same class. I'm not in the same world. Uh, I cannot remember anything. It's like I'm, I, I'm in the class in the first time. I don't know as if I don't know English. I don't know the teacher. I don't know my classmates. All of a sudden it's just closes on me. I know nothing. Wow. And, that's uh, this terrifying. Really terrifying, and I didn't know what was wrong with me. And I thought that I'm very lazy, I'm very stupid, and I lost my university degree because of that. Mm. Um, I never graduated from it, so and I was blaming myself. I said, "Oh, you're stupid. Uh, you were an uh, anorexic. That's why you cared about your body, not about your health, and that's why you lost your uh, university degree." But now I understand. No, it wasn't my fault, actually. Right, exactly. So here you're going along, and are you, I'm guessing you're probably trying a lot of different solutions along the way, right? Trying this, trying that. Yes. Diets. Everything that crosses me, I tried it. Everything. I left nothing. Wow. It's, uh, yes, uh, nothing. And even uh, crazy diets, like this cabbage soup diet and the... Uh, uh, banana diet and the egg diet. I left nothing. And even anorexia. I was anorexic for years. I would eat like 50 uh, calories a day. No more. And I would still not lose weight. Wow. That's, that's depressing. Mm -hmm. Really depressing. Really oh my depressing. gosh. So this went on for years. And then when did you... Um, Tell me when things started to shift. What was the, the time things started to shift for you? Uh, Health-wise, doctor? Yeah, like what information did you get that led you to trying something that did work? Well, because my health, my health uh, became so bad, it was scary actually. Um, my health was getting uh, deteriorated in the last few years, mm -hmm. but the last two years it was scary in a way that if I went to the specialist doctors, the best of the best in my country, nobody even could uh, diagnose what's wrong with me. Um, the depression was way uh, over my head. Uh, no medication was working with me. I had uh, suicidal thoughts. I was always uh, thinking I cannot, I cannot breathe without thinking that I need to die now, wow. not tomorrow. I want it to happen now. And I wanted to be very, very violent, very, it's like every breath is hard for me. And I tried to commit suicide many times. And one time it was too, uh, very serious. I was hospital, hospital, in the hospital for it for two days. Um, I couldn't. I, and this is about suicide, but even my, my blood was raging all the time. I was being very angry, agitated for no reason. Um, I want to fight. Uh, I want. I was even able to kill someone because I was so raging. Uh, I thought that if I get into a fight with someone, it would be physical, and I would kill them. Even if, and even this, uh, I, I would. I would uh, think about the scenario. I would say, even if I kill them, if it's not enough. I'm, I'm wow. that rage inside that even killing a person is not enough to cool me. And I was very scared about all these thoughts. I would, um, I would actually lock myself in my room and not even see my family or sit with my family because I was scared that I would hurt them. During that period of time, were you on uh, medication um, at the same time? Did they put you on any medication? Uh, on and on. Okay. Uh, sometimes I would say that it's nothing is working, so I would stop any medication. Sometimes I would go to someone, help me, please. I'm in this situation. They would give me some medication. It would calm me a little bit for like three or four weeks, and then 
no, uh, it doesn't work at all. Because the interesting thing about the, uh, the feeling of those feelings you told me about, that's like one of the big side effects of certain medications. So I was just curious. I mean, it's definitely a, a classic. That's why they, they put some of the, the black labels on some of these medications that warn people against that because it's not a natural thing to have someone have those impulses. Um, so, so eventually you, you found um, one of my videos, right? Tell me about that. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, my health was really weird, doctor. I was, beside my mental health, I was, like, physically, I couldn't do anything. I was always in my bed. Um, I couldn't move, and sometimes my body gets like a wave of stiffness, and all my body would get stiff. I cannot even move my mouth. I cannot move my, my eyes. I cannot do nothing. It's like there is no connection between what my brain wants to work and my body. I cannot do nothing for my body. And this would be like for minutes and sometimes for half an hour or an hour. It depends. And uh, sometimes I would get like shaky heads like this. And sometimes it would stay with me for months, actually. Uh, sometimes I would I want to walk. And while I'm walking, all of a sudden I get stiff. I cannot move my leg. And if I walk, I walk like a, a new toddler. Like I cannot balance myself. My spine is like wiggly. My legs are wiggly. Uh, I can fall. I would, uh, I would fall from any noise, uh, from any sudden noise, any sudden uh, movement, anything. It will just make me fall uh, from uh, from my feet, and or or put me in a spasm. I would be like shaking, and all my body just like squeezes on me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, I was in constant pain, nonstop constant pain. No matter what I do. I'm in constant pain. Um, and after I did my uh, stomach sleep, actually, for the first year, I was better. Mm. Because, you know, stomach sleep, you don't eat enough. I didn't, I didn't connect all of these things. Mm. So for a year, I was fine. After I become better and I can eat better, my health just went downhill. So, I cannot so eat. So you, you did the gastric bypass for weight loss at that point. And you felt a little yes. bit better. And for those of you that are just watching, the reason why she felt better is that um, when you have gastric bypass, at least initially, it bypasses something in the small intestine that reduces your risk for diabetes. It reduces insulin, uh, especially high insulin, because high insulin is usually behind a lot of the problems you mentioned. But go ahead, continue. So you you got the gastric, gastric bypass, felt better, and then all of a sudden you slipped back and started feeling worse when you started eating. Yes, all of these things just became worse and worse and worse. And plus, I would get to like, uh, now I understand that once the insulin resistant symptoms, I would get hungry all the time, tired all the time. I would wake up from my uh, sleep three, four times every night, uh, feeling like a drop and I need to eat a snack to feel it a little bit better. And uh, uh, that, when I eat, I'm not satisfied. I'm not, uh, I'm not full. I'm never full. Wow. And I was always look for chocolates and sugar and all the sweet things. Uh, and of course, my health became worse and worse till I was actually better. And I, I couldn't even sit. I cannot sit for like five minutes. I always need to lay down to a little bit feel a little bit better, you know? Mm -hmm. I have no strength, uh, I have no control on my body. Uh, sometimes even I need to go to the bathroom or even take a sip of water and the water is right beside me, I cannot actually reach the water. Got it. It's, it was it was that bad with me. Wow. And uh, till, one, till one day, I, as usual, I was in my bed scrolling um, in the iPad to watch anything to distract, distract me from my pain and your video was on the um, um, recommendation page hmm. because a few a few months ago I was uh, searching for why am I always hungry? W why do I feel hungrier when I eat fruits? Why I make smoothie and makes me more hungry instead of full? Why a banana is making me hungry? And I found no no answer. I found nothing until few months later when your uh, video showed up and I actually I ignored it. I said, what's that insulin? It was, yes, it was a video of yours about insulin resistant. It was like a 20 minutes long video. 
I said, oh, what's that? And I ignored it. And for the next four or five days, every time I opened my iPad and there was the same video every time. And I grabbed and said, who is this doctor? What is he talking about? And why is it recommended for me? And I would ignore it until one day it's just, I got curious and said, oh, let's, let's see what you've got to say. And this click changed my life. Wow. See, I kept trying to tell you, but you just were ignoring me until finally I had to remind you. I had to bug you enough where it's like, watch my video. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, it was. Uh, I don't know why. How it showed in my feed for after months of searching? I don't know. And why is it this video all the time? It's the same video for days, doctor. Until I watched it and it, it was like clicked. You, it's, it was like if you were, you were talking about me when you were uh, describing the insulin resistant uh, symptoms. It was like as if you were talking about me. You're, you're uh, talking about my situation. I said, I've never, doctor, I've never heard about insulin resistance and I've never heard about keto. So I was wow. like, oh my God, he's actually describing me. Wow, and that must I have been wild. The same video. Yes, and I've watched the same video again. And then I started to watch other videos. I want to see what's this keto you're talking about. And I was in a very bad status that even your short videos, that four or five minutes, even these, sometimes I would fall asleep. Even in these five minutes, I would just go into sleep. And I need to rewatch it and rewatch it until I'd be able to finish just five minutes. Sometimes eight or 10 times I need to rewatch one video. Wow. to be able to go through it, actually. And sometimes just to uh, understand it because my brain was so bad, doctor. I couldn't uh, focus, I couldn't remember, I couldn't anything. So I needed to watch everything multiple times to actually uh, understand this one. Wow, wow. Yeah. So, so obviously you started uh, eating differently and um, tell, tell us what happened after that. Well, um, after I've watched your uh, videos for about four or five days, I went to a doctor, a diabetic doctor, and told them I need to make uh, to do me a, a blood test for insulin resistance. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, he did a wrong one, a wrong test for me. Yes. <laughs> and they called me and said, you have no insulin resistance. And I was happy because now I don't have to actually cut carbs. I can eat bread. I can eat chocolate. I was happy, actually. Oh but there is this voice inside of me that kept bugging me. The same day, kept bugging me. No way, no way. This doctor was talking about you. And he was describing you. No way he is wrong in what he's saying. I've tried so many crazy diets in my life. Try this one. It will not kill me. And the next day, I woke up. I fried some eggs with butter and bacon and coffee. And that was it. I, for the, for like within three weeks, uh, all of a sudden I, I realized that I don't have any suicidal thoughts. Wow. I, I don't have depression, even though doctor, I didn't know about that. Okay. I didn't know when I, when I looked at your videos, I was just trying to find a way to just get up from bed, just to walk. Uh, I didn't know about the psychology, the psychology. I didn't know that will make me feel better. Mm. I didn't know so many, all of these things about keto. I didn't know about it. Uh, so all of a sudden, three weeks in, and I real, I realized that say, it's the first time in years, I don't feel like I want to kill myself. And oh my I'm not angry at my mother. I'm not angry about my family. I'm not raging. And then I got into YouTube and searched Dr. Berg, keto and uh, suicide and all this. And then I'm, oh, wow. So it works in this, actually, not just insulin resistant. And then I started to be more interested about keto in um, treatment, not just weight loss or not just as an insulin resistant uh, uh, program. Mm -hmm. I realized that it's much, much more than that. Wow. Did you also and do, never, what was that? So since I became on keto, I never got this stiffness. I never got problem with wow. walking. Nothing. I have, I have zero symptoms, doctor. Seriously, wow. I have zero symptoms. And within three months, doctor, the only thing that kept with me, because I had uh, constant nightmares, 
and I would get fevers uh, and I would get shaky hands. These, uh, I started uh, carnivore and carnivore helped me in this. Keto made it much, much less, subdued it. Mm -hmm. But carnivore helped me to go and uh, for that 100%. Keto took me to 95%. Carnivore took me to 100%. Great. So now I'm, 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 uh, I'm mixing between keto and carnivore. And now I am in perfect health. I have zero problems since wow. after three months. Just three months, doctor. Wow, that's incredible. So that tells me you must have had some digestive issues. Um, what about, um, did you start doing any intermittent fasting as well? Well, you know, with keto, you are in intermittent fasting without even thinking because you don't feel like you're hungry. Right. So I, I never, yeah, I didn't care about uh, the fasting, but then without me thinking, I was fasting for about 14 to 16 hours a day. Wow. That would, that, these are, by, yeah, without me feeling hungry. And that this happened very fast within five or six days. I started waking up and I'm not, I'm not hungry. It just, that just tells me the power of how amazing the body can bounce back if it has the right thing. Even if there's da uh, damage in your brain from the past carbs, which we know that you ate a few of them, um, the ketones bypass the damage and start to actually feed the neurons in your brain and the heart. And I can imagine it's just probably such a sense of relief to have to... Um, you know, get over this thing. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine. That's so amazing. Yes, yes doctor. I was, I was always saying, as, 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 as I told you before, because it's, it's scary now. I cannot believe that all what I was suffering from and all my life was ruined because of carbs and nobody ever told me anything. I went to so many specialists, so many specialists, and I was praying, please, tell me something, something is wrong with me. And they would tell me there is nothing wrong with you. And if they said anything, it's just a guess. It's not an actual uh, diagnosis, it's just a guess. And they would give me treatments and nothing works. And some, some of them actually, they told me, you're just imagining it. You're just in distress, just calm down. And oh I, was, I was in a very distressed mood because now I, I can't even trust myself with what I'm feeling. And my family started to not believe me. But I actually, I am suffering for real. They oh thought God. that I am in a state of mind that I want to be sick. I want people to care about me. And so I felt like hopeless. I was hopeless. Yeah. I was in the point to give up, actually. And now when I think what I was like two years ago and where I am now, it's scary, doctor. That's it's, all because of carbs. Yeah. Just carbs. Yeah carbohydrates for those of you that are new to this information there's a, a test that you unfortunately they should have done on you a long time ago it's called homa ir h-o-m-a dash i-r it measures fasting insulin and and glucose but it's mainly the insulin fasting test that they never test they would have found that your insulin is probably off the charts growing up and um i think this is what i think that happened uh i was in practice for 30 years and there there there's always a group of people who came in that were born overweight. Like, like, but when you start to ask them questions about if they're, sometimes their mother did remember, and found out that either they're asthmatic, they had some type of infection, ear infection, throat infection, the flu, some type of infection early on that affected the endocrine system and threw things off to the point where it slowed the metabolism down which is fascinating, not to mention that if they give you treatments, whether it's antibiotics or this or that, that makes it worse, especially as a child. Um, so that's probably what started the whole thing. And then I could imagine if you're like me, I mean, I just lived on carbs and not even connecting the dots between your cognitive function and those carbohydrates and your blood sugars. Um, I mean, the what keto does, especially even intermittent fasting with the right kind of keto uh, or carnivore, which puts you in keto, hardcore, um, it affects your mood. It'll bring you right up, just bring you out of these lower mood states. And it's just like, there's a point where you can actually be where you don't crave anything. It's like you just ate, but you're not hungry and you just, you're satisfied and you feel calm. Um, I'm curious, did you, have you taken any B vitamins yet? 
or nutritional yeast? Yes, uh, nutrition, nutritional yeast, actually, I do have it, but I was never uh, very careful to take it daily. Okay. But I do take multivitamins, I do take uh, magnesium, I started to take potassium now, uh, vitamin okay. D. The, the, uh, the B ones, the B vitamins specifically, especially vitamin B1, will take away that internal anger and stress and, and pressure. It would take it away within three minutes, just like, Phew. so, um, and that's just coming. It's basically, it's a kind of a, it's a lot, it's called lactic acidosis where you're, it's like a combination. You don't have enough oxygen in your body and it's like you're getting this tension and you just need some relief and you, um, sometimes you get restless leg. Um, you can't, you cannot sit still. Um, and it's just, yet you're exhausted all the time. So it's a, it's a nervous energy that, um, it's a severe B1 deficiency. And the B1 uh, is supposed to feed that part of your brain. I don't know if you saw my video on the hippocampus, which is all about the memory and having remembering things and, and also learning. So um, mm. I think you'll maybe have to go back to school now that you can hopefully start learning very soon and you can uh, retain data. Well, actually, actually, I've, I've just... Uh, um, 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 I've just uh, got into your course. Oh, I signed great. into the group. Oh, great. Yes, because, because now I am the most, uh, the most thing that I'm careful and I want to do is to help people and to open their eyes that there is a solution for your uh, problem because nobody did this for me. I, I went so, to so many people and nobody had an answer for me. Um, now that I've found it my way, I don't want others to suffer like me and have no answers. As that's why I've created my Instagram account and my YouTube account, and I'm trying to teach people about do keto, not just, as if you said, doctor, when you, when you are healthy, you will lose your fat. Mm -hmm. uh, but be healthy first. Take care of your body first, and you will lose fat, and you will be healthy. Mm -hmm. So don't care about, I need to do this, I need to do that, because I want to lose 10 kg every month. Be, be healthy and mm -hmm. your body will take care of it. Eat well, eat keto, and you will be fine. Everything will be fine, but first treat the things. When I talk to people, uh, so many people of them, uh, they came to me just for weight issues, and then when I told them do this and do that, they would come back to me and said, actually, I was a very angry person. Now I'm very calm. Uh, wow. Actually, I, was, I had this problem because so many, even I, I had few things that I was always thinking that, oh, it's a genetic thing. Oh, I had this because my aunt has it, my grandfather has it. And now on keto, it disappeared. So it's not a genetic thing. It's actually right. something was wrong with my body. Right. So even then they said, oh, I thought because my grandmother was like this, so I am like this. Now on keto, it disappeared. So I told them, yes, do the keto the right way for the right reason. And your body will just transform in a magical way. Wow. And this is what I'm very, uh, very, very uh, passionate about. And that's why I've enrolled in your course so I would get a certificate. So at least I would have some validation because I'm not a specialist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an anything. So people, yes, some of them are very trusty, worthy of me, they love me and they trust my word, but some people they need this certification and i want to learn from you more and more dr berg um, you don't know when when someone when somebody's life is changed and saved i told you i was able to kill anybody i was able to take drugs just because i want to numb my pain and in my country if you kill someone deliberately you get executed so i could have been executed by now wow if it wasn't for your video doctor wow that's incredible. Can imagine? Yes. Can you imagine? That's why um, I want to learn from you. You're my, you're my resource, actually. You are my resource for Kido. Whatever I want to learn, I would just go to YouTube and Dr. Beck and this, and I would watch the videos that I need to watch because you're my savior. You don't know me. You don't know me. You don't know that I exist, and yet you, you saved my life in so wow. many ways. For that, I'm so thankful, Dr. You, yeah. I cannot thank you enough. I cannot wow. thank you enough. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate your hard work, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Because you, you always wonder who's watching these videos, and then um, then you get to see people. Like even each year when I 
well, not this year because of the COVID, but each year we'd have these summits and we'd have uh, seven or 800 people fly in from around the world. And you get to meet people that are applying this information and with amazing results, but you, you don't know these people, you don't even know them, but you're putting a video out and they benefited from it. So that's very, very gratifying. Um, I have a question for you. Um, I have a, uh, I think you know I have a, um, a channel in Arabic. Um, do you know? Do yes. You? Okay. Yes. And um, so what I've noticed is that um, people in the Middle East, they, a lot of them have diabetes. Yes. What, what, what are they eating that's causing that? That's what I don't know. We have an abundance of cafes and restaurants and uh -huh. easy food. Okay. Very high in fat and sugar, and because of our weather, uh, we do not uh, move a lot. We depend on the cars because it's very hot most of the year, times of year. So even people who are go and walk a little bit, thirty minutes, one hour will not burn all of this. You you can you can resist a cake today and tomorrow, but you cannot resist it every day, and it's in your face all the time, and it's very easy. Wow. We have so many restaurants that are 24-7 mm -hmm. that will deliver to your uh, home. And it's not even expensive. So, uh, and all the gatherings, it, there has to be abundance uh, of food, okay. very bad food. Okay. Because I've, I've been to Dubai and they do have a lot of sweets there. A lot of different sweets. And I'm look, looking around like, oh my goodness, it's like, I'm trying to find something that's keto here. It's not as easy as I thought. <laughs> No, it's not easy. And because we, are, we all have so many uh, nationalities, so we have cuisines from all over the world. Yeah. So you cannot say, oh, I, I can resist baklava. You can't right. resist it there. Right. You cannot resist this. So it's very hard, very hard. And uh, as I've noticed, Dr. Berg, in Kuwait, we have a specialized place for diabetes. And yet they do not test for insulin resistance. I went there for, yes, I joined their club for exercising and they did all types of tests on me. Yet there was no test for insulin resistance. And it's a specialized center for diabetes. And yet yeah. there's no test for insulin resistance. So many people, many Kuwaitis, they do have insulin resistance, but they do not know. All of a sudden, it's a diabetic. Issue. Right. Right. I know. I, I really, um, I just am really adamant about getting the word out on that area. I'm glad that you are going to be helping as well. Um, what um, about the other problem, which is vitamin D? Um, there's like a pandemic of vitamin D deficiency. Now, I'm guessing, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but just because of the clothing, um, covering up most of the body, it's, you're not going to get a lot of vitamin D exposure that way. And yes. most people probably don't take vitamin D as a supplement, and it's virtually impossible to get your vitamin D from food, so mm -hmm. that's the vitamin D problem. Yes, we have a vitamin D problem, even though even sometimes we would go to get a vitamin D injection or pills, and they would say, we are out, come next week. That's how big problem, because... Our clothing, that's one. Uh, two, because it's too hot, doctor. Yeah, it's too right. hot to go in the sun. You would right. just burn. Right. And uh, for that, we use cars and don't get enough uh, sun exposure. Most of our malls are closed because it's of the heat. So we do not get it. Sun wow. And you know what's interesting about vitamin D deficiencies? Um, that can put you at risk for diabetes right from there. It can put your liver at risk. It can make you depressed. It can cause massive inflammation. It can create autoimmune problems if you're very deficient. So vitamin D is really key with, and also a low immune system. So, I mean, I think that's like going to be a big part of um, people really turning things around too, is just at least clean up the vitamin deficiencies that people have in different parts of the world, but especially in where you are. But it's such an easy yeah. fix, you know, if you just have vitamin D. Um, but, yeah, it's just too hot. You cannot um, be out, out there for too long or else you'll, 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 it'll burn you. It's just so – I think it's like over 100 degrees, right? Yes, much over 100 degrees. <laughs> we would easily go over 50s uh, Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't okay. know. 
I okay. No I know it's over 100 degrees. I think it's a uh, 100 degrees. I think it's probably 110, maybe 115, maybe 20. It's like literally you can fry an egg on the sidewalk. We do. <laughs> Some people do. <laughs> yes, That's we cannot hard. even open the car door. We need to hold the tissue or something to be able to hold the car door to open it or to, uh, to handle the wheels because it's too hot. If, if the car is not under the... Uh, a shield or something right under the sun, you'd actually bake inside the car. Well, so what I'm, nobody would want a sun. <laughs> no, what I'm curious about, what did they do 150 years ago before they had air conditioning? What did they do to sleep at night? How did they survive? Well, actually, when my, my mother says it wasn't this bad in uh, the past because there was, it was simple life. No much, uh, we didn't have all these factories and mm. all the houses were made from, uh, by mud, from mud. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, so there was air circulation, not like uh, nowadays. Okay, so that makes sense. So it wasn't that bad, even their food, they didn't have refrigeration and yet it doesn't go bad for two or three days. Because it's not it. like that. Yeah. Okay, fascinating. Wow. Well, I'm so glad that you came up, uh, you stumbled and you persisted and you didn't ignore that video for too long. And then you finally <laughs> watched it and you learned something and you applied it. And now look at you, be like you're, you're helping other people, which is amazing, which is yes, a therapy. Thanks. therapy. Hey, I'll, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll, that's awesome. Yes. Well, I wanted just to thank you for coming on. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of benefit from this and hopefully if someone is new to keto, they'll even try it. There's a lot of videos. I'll put the, your link down below. Um, if you. if your your uh, videos are in Arabic, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is exciting. So I will uh, um, we'll we'll follow up with you and uh, let me know when you become a coach, and we'll get you certified. Um, I have a, a lot more. Um, Course is coming up soon on different things, so you'll take advantage of that, but you'll be part of our coaching network, so that's going to be very exciting to help, help everyone that needs it. Great. I'll, I would, I'm looking for this, doctor. It's awesome. an honor for me to be with you, and thank you for your time, and thank you for um, helping me to reach out for more people. Hey, my pleasure.